Hi, good day. So, this is the front of Waitakere Hospital, and welcome. My name is Manish, one of the paediatric fellows. Uh, first of all, just a, some housekeeping sort of stuff. If you drive a car, you're in luck. There's lots of parking, as you probably can't see because it's night, but um, you'll sort that out, I'm sure. I'd just like to make a special mention to make sure you're aware of who your supervisor is for the run, uh, because they're going to be an important person. And apart from that, we'll see you inside. Great, so there are four main work areas at Waitakere Hospital that you'll be posted to. Uh, the first one is the ward, and I've written down a few little notes about things to remember. The first one is to wash your hands. Uh, the second one is to probably discuss with the nurse coordinator. They're really useful in coordinating what's happening to the kids. We have a, a results book which is coming, which is similar to the one at Middlemore and also Children's ED, and I'll show you on your first day where that lives. Um, just like the Concerto systems at Auckland and Manukau, uh, you can accept the results uh, using the computer. So where that's possible, I'd urge you to do that because that makes life a lot easier. There's also a way to comment results, which is also useful. With Concerto, you can also look up results by service. So simply from the usual patient menu, if you go down and click applications, you'll come to Webeclear, then you can search by service, so either Rangatira Unit or Skaboo. This will bring up all the unaccepted results uh, by the service. What you can also do, as I mentioned along the top, is accept, comment or refer. So comment is very useful, particularly for writing antibiotics children are on, or what action has been taken. Um, we do have a system for ward reviews, but I just urge you to discuss with the ward clerk and also the consultant um, because there are no strict rules with ward reviews. Um, great. Uh, we do have quite an extensive teaching timetable. I'll put some information about that. But you get teaching, uh, it's probably one of the fullest programs for a registrar actually. There's teaching on Wednesday morning, Starship Update, there's teaching on Thursday and there's also teaching on Friday morning as well as a few other meetings. So just be wary of where you are in the teaching timetable and we'll go through that day one as well. So Skaboo is the other area you may be posted to, one of the other four areas. Um, the important things to know about Waitakere Skaboo is one, wash your hands, and also that we use a separate uh, Microsoft Access database for collecting our data and also generating a handover list. I'll walk you through that in person because uh, it's probably easy stuff I show you that. Um, we also uh, see a lot of babies on the postnatal ward and you will probably uh, just need to have a go at doing that with one of the consultants but in general just look for green dots on the whiteboard. As Yasha show, shows you later on in this video, um, taking the resuscitation bag and the near puff, the Thomas bag and the near puff, is what we do for most deliveries. Um, that's because most rooms don't have near puff and you can't always rely on the equipment being there. So I urge you, if you have a spare moment, please open the bag and just familiarise yourself where everything is because there's a lot of stuff crammed in there and it's quite hard to get to when you need to get to it. Hi, my name is Yasha, I'm one of the registrars. Just wanted to show you the transport incubator, the recess bag for Nina and recesses, and another bag which is also very important, which is the Neo Puff. You'll hear more about it once you start the run. But these three features of Skidoo are going to be very important to you when you're on night shift and on call for all the deliveries. Cool. And um, we do have a credential nurse on and they can attend deliveries, but they must also tap you on the shoulder just to let you know if they're going to any deliveries. And we've just got a brand new BFHI education kit, which I'm sure you're all excited about getting stuck into. And there is a promise of chocolate fish by our breastfeeding educator if you complete the quiz. I'll show you that in Skaboo. It's a physical book. Right. The third place of work is the emergency department. For those of you familiar with Concerto, we use a whiteboard system, which I won't bring up now because it'll have patient details on it, but you just simply log in, and when you see someone, you click on that and pick a consultant, hopefully the consultant who's on for ED, 
Then we also have a separate list because your phone will probably be going hot and cold the whole day. And this is found if you go to the intranet and you go under P for Peds Expect List and then you simply log in. Cool, so this is um, our system of logging when we get calls. So if you get a call that a GP or someone else or Starship wants to send a patient in, you put in the NHI and fill in some details. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it's quite good at handover. We will kind of review this and make sure we've seen kids who were expected, and if we didn't see them, find out where they went or if we need to get worried about it. So that's all pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy to use. Um, so that's the only thing to really remember. It's under P under the internet site. Uh, great. In the emergency department, um, you may also get some other calls where you will kind of want to make a note about a patient but you haven't actually seen them. We also have a system which is really good for that called a PEDS note and I can't bring up the concerto without giving all patient details away but just on the top left you're able to add a note and this is really useful if you perhaps give some advice, consult on a patient where they didn't actually get admitted, medication changes etc. So I would encourage you to take up that opportunity to use that system. Um, great, now just with the ED, uh, the roster is uh, pretty straightforward. There is a 10am to 7pm shift. I'm not sure if the registrars like it or loathe it, but um, for that shift you usually start at 10am in the ED but also in the ward, so usually just ringing the consultant or seeing who's on the ward to see where the work is um, is the easiest way to just put yourself in the right spot. Given the size of Waitakere you're often pretty mobile where you need where the work is, um, so just bear that in mind. Great. G'day, welcome to Clinic, my name's Manish. Um, so just a few things about clinic, particularly for the registrars. I guess the first thing is to make sure to find out who your supervising consultant is and usually try to approach them before the clinic starts really good. I'll show you in a second where you can grab the notes. And most consultants generally like the clinic sort of just to have a look, clinic letters just to have a look at them once you've finished with them. A uh, few other things just to note about Waitakere. Uh, over here we do all the measuring and things ourselves um, in the way so just make sure you do that otherwise if I had one take home message just check with your supervisor find out who your supervising consultant is and things will be fine okay. this is where you get the notes up from clinic so it's always pays especially when you're looking at new patients to have a look at the referral um, the notes live here and they usually arrive just before the clinic starts so either about 7 to 8 in the morning, in the afternoon, they'll probably be there from the morning. So just remember to have a look at the clinic letters before, the clinic notes before, and um, that might give you some good information. Okay. So this is an intranet site. This has got lots of useful links and information on it. Probably the most important box is this one here, the said site. You'll see people refer to it lots when you're here. So if you click on this and go into paediatrics, this has got a lot of useful information by subject. Some of this content is specific to Waitakere Hospital, some of it links to Starship and NICU. The most important thing you're probably all interested in is your roster. It's under administration if you go to SMO and Registrar's roster. And this is what your roster should look like. And it's got everyone on there, so there's a lot of consultants there, North Shore Group, Waitakere Group, and also some specialist clinics. And there you guys are down the bottom. Um, that's all pretty self-explanatory, but um, you probably find yourself referring to that quite a bit. Um, other things, if you have worked in the Auckland area, the concerto is basically the same as the other areas. If you have worked in Auckland before, I'd suggest keeping your Auckland login so we can see the letters, because that's sometimes quite useful. And that's it really. Um, have a play around on the site. Remember to check your email. It is really useful. And um, yeah, okay.
Fresh Hero staff. My name's Helen. I'm in Alessi. I'm Melody. I'm May. I'm Rhonda. Welcome to the ward. Just make sure you wash your hands <laughs> cleanly and you have to listen to always nurse, always listen to the nurses, what we say guys. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rhonda, one of the ward clerks at Rangateri Unit. This is the, um, when you come in, this is the mailboxes for your staff to check any mail that might be here for you. And usually ward review diaries here for any children that are coming in for a ward review. So if you're not sure of anything, ask one of the ward clerks and they will help you with anything. Hello, my name is Jackie. I'm a nurse. Welcome to my Jackie School. This is my friend Nixie. When you come and visit us, please wash your hands. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carmen Haynes. I'm the paediatric nurse educator here in ED. We are a shared ED with adult and paediatrics. Um, we are a small team. Some nurses have a lot of experience in paediatrics where others may not. And we're required to move across the floor into adults and peds if it gets busy in either area. Um, similar with our medical staff, some staff are experienced in paediatrics. We have two staff members who are paediatricians, Stefan Vanderbilt and Owen Gilbert has recently joined us as well. We're lucky to have them on staff, however when it does get busy, um, the paediatric registrars um, work as a team, they help out with ED patients as well. So although predominantly you'd be seeing your paediatric expected patients, at times you will be um, asked to help out if it gets busy and we have a lot of our doctors in recess with adult patients. Um, to ensure that our staff keep up skilled in paediatrics, we run regular in-services and on Thursday mornings we have a scenario which you're more than welcome to come and attend. It's alternate between adult and paediatrics and it's set up with mannequins in the recess room here. Um, the main emphasis that we have in ED is sticking to our six hour target and we push towards making some quick clinical decisions to try and keep to these targets. It works out better for children and their families and our staff. And some of the issues we've had in the past are around children perhaps staying in the department longer in a recess situation. Because we don't have intensive care services here at Waitakere, it's important to um, do quick referrals to PICU when they're expected to retrieve patients um, because sometimes it takes quite a bit of time for them to organise a team to get to us. Um, communication is one of the biggest things here. We are a small team so please um, communicate with the charge nurses if you have issues and I'm more than happy uh, to come and spend some time with you as well if it's a paediatric education issue. Thanks and welcome and look forward to meeting you. Hi, I'm Tiana, I'm the place specialist on Rangatira Unit. Um, if you need anybody to come down to ED, if you're seeing a patient, I don't find coming down um, there, but I'm basically based on the ward. Um, secondly, please remember that we do provide um, that the playroom and the bedsides are safe zones, um, so therefore procedure uh, to be done in the treatment room. And if you have any questions, just please come see me. Thanks. Great. White Hickory has two liaison nurses. Anne Marie and Jan, they're very happy people and they're very happy to be talked to with registrars actually and they they have several jobs but um, they're often a really good go between between the ward, ED and also home care nurses. And Hello and welcome to Waitakere Hospital. My name is Rebecca Eid and I'm a clinical charge midwife. We are a secondary level maternity unit which caters for the women of West Auckland. We, just, we have just over 3,000 births a year. The midwifery service works very closely with the obstetricians, paediatricians and nursing staff to enable excellent care for women and their babies. Communication and teamwork are very important. We work closely with North Shore Hospital which takes our women with more complex needs. We accept labouring women with babies over 32 weeks. Under this gestation, women are normally transferred to Auckland City Hospital or other tertiary facilities if there's no bed space there. Women are cared for by the lead maternity carers who are midwives. We do not currently have any private GP or obstetricians practicing at Waitakere. There is a rostered consultant obstetrician each day and night. We don't have house officers or registrars working in, obstetrician, in obstetrics. On each shift, a clinical charge midwife is present to provide clinical leadership and organise the ward management. You are welcome to liaise with her during your shift to discuss any cases which may require your input. 
we will endeavour to inform you in advance of births requiring paediatric attendance according to our protocols. We understand that you will be busy, especially on night shifts, and you cover several areas within the hospital, which can mean a long walk. Most babies will not require resuscitation, and we thankful, thank you for your respectful, quiet presence at the birth. We are here to assist you if resuscitation is required. We endeavour to keep mothers and their babies together. Each case is decided on an individual basis. Sometimes, however, we are unable to care for a baby requiring a lot of input, and we'll discuss this with you. Please discuss any babies you'd like to admit from the community with us before accepting them, as we need to ensure that we have a bed for the mother and baby. We often accept babies who are less than two weeks old. After this time, babies are more often admitted to Rangatera Ward. We're happy to provide midwifery support for the mother and baby while they are in Rangatira. If the baby has been admitted from the community and is unwell, they are admitted via ECC. This is because there is always medical staff present at ECC who can immediately assess and treat the baby. Babies on the ward requiring a paediatric review will have a green dot by their name, an ID sticker in the ped book, in our chart file and a referral form in the baby's notes. In maternity, we provide a team approach to caring for, for women and their babies. We welcome you as part of that team and look forward to working with you during your time with us. My name is Jenny Crawford and I'm the paediatric pharmacist for Matter DHB. So I look after Rangatira Ward, um, special care baby unit here and over at the shore and also Wilson Centre. So I always try and come to hand over, that gives me a good idea of the children that are in the ward and are generally in the ward in the morning and sometimes obviously in the afternoon. But I do carry a cell phone and the phone number is up in the ward so if you ever want to contact me I'm more than happy that you do that and will try and help where I can. So my role as paediatric pharmacist is obviously to just keep an eye on what medications you're prescribing, correct um, dosages, method of preparation and administration and to offer any other advice for the administration of medications to our paediatric population. We all know that the potential for medication errors in our paediatric population is three times higher than our adults, so really important that we get it right first time. Now probably about four or five, five years ago, White Matter developed its own paediatric medication chart some of you will have come, I'm sure, from different areas using different medication charts and will have gone on to use a new standard adult medication chart that has been put out by the Health and Quality Improvement Team in Wellington. We, luckily, have been given the opportunity to carry on using our medication charts because we feel we have made a big difference in medication safety with using them. All the indications on them <coughs> I relate to the national chart, so there's no problems, we conform with all the national charting standards. So just the things, this is our paediatric medication chart here, important we've got weight, gestational age, obviously if the child's under four weeks of age that may be important for dosing. You will see here we have two sections, one for regular and one when we turn over the page here um, for, for non-regular, so we need to always separate out those. Here we have a little column down here, number of days pharmacy dispense on discharge, because we have written a policy here knowing that when children are discharged we sometimes find obviously that the parents will not pick up the medication and can't afford to pick up the medication and we, you consider it in the best interest of the child that they continue with the therapy that has been started in hospital. The pharmacy downstairs will dispense that for you. So for an example if they have one dose of um, prednisolone and the white cross then have another dose in the ward and you want them to continue to have another dose we're happy to prescribe that one dose into the syringe or if you feel that the antibiotic they started that you know that parent is not going to pick it up and the pharmacy department has closed you also have the ability to actually dispense medications um, the nurse will reconstitute for you and each antibiotic etc will have a label here that you can fill in with the details how much to give how often and give to the child to ensure continuity of therapy just 
Going back to our medication chart here, we will see that on the back page we've got some useful information of common drugs we use, um, you know, kefataxine doses, amoxicillin, but down here also useful um, body surface area and that useful calculation that we often forget how to calculate your body surface area and some indications. So that's our paediatric medication chart. For those who will spend time in special care baby unit, we have a neonatal medication chart and obviously that has more days in it so you're not having to read chart, but it has another important issue up here that has a succession of weights because we all know that medications like our iron for haemoglobins down should be increased as the baby increases its weight. So just remember to constantly refer to that or complete that information. On the back page here we have the gentamicin and amoxicillin, the two drugs that we use for suspected or proven sepsis. Our gentamicin policy will be different from other areas that you have worked in and we do have our own gentamicin policy on our own website, quality website, the dosage is here. And also we are just renewing and about to be published the gentamicin policy that would incorporate those babies that are transferred from national women's and have been on 36 hour dosing, what to do, a common error that often occurs, wrong dosing when they've been transferred over. So we'd like to make you familiar with this medication and neonatal drug chart. Um, they are, we think, an added benefit for medication safety um, for our children. We've also very worked very hard with um, some of our clinicians, and one of them, Stefan van der Velt, and you'll notice that we have a lot of documentation out now, reference charts, emergency drug calculators, and one that is available for you for all those IV infusions that you will use on that very odd occasion, but when they do happen um, to come along, you want to give them immediately. So these <clears throat> will give you amount to be diluted, um, milligrams for kg, amount to be diluted of 50 ml, what 1 ml per hour and the dose range, a valuable resource I'm sure in any emergency situation. So these are all available on the SEDS, the Clinical Electronic Decision Support System, which has been developed by the Knowledge Centre to give timely information for clinicians based on best practice. Any questions you have of all these things, I'm more than happy to help. As I say, I'll be on the ward every day. So good luck with your time at Waitakere. I hope you enjoy your stay with us. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm one of the dietitians. Um, I provide specialist services for Skaboo, Rangatera and outpatient paediatrics. Um, my colleagues Bridget Little and Rena Sonyasi also provide some cover and do some outpatient clinics. Um, in Skaboo, the main focus of dietitians' work is um, focusing on growth and monitoring weight gains. Um, and I'm also involved in providing advice on the management of reflux and any other feeding issues that infants may have. In Rangatera, the workload is very varied um, and I provide advice on anything to do with nutrition um, and food. With regard to infants who have allergies, I work very closely with the clinical nurse specialists and um, we also follow infants up um, in outpatient clinic and there's an allergy specialist team working in Waitakere as well. Um, for infants who have a tube feed, whether it's a short term feed, um, I can be involved in that. For example, say if there's an infant with bronchiolitis that's been admitted and um, their fluid's being restricted, we can advise on concentrating up feeds to prevent any weight gain during admission rather than dealing with the consequences of the weight loss when they're on their way home. Um, for patients who have long-term feeds, um, when they're admitted it's a really good time to actually have a review of the overall nutrition um, and see if the feed is still meeting their nutrition requirements. Um, the other thing I can be involved in is providing advice um, for alternatives to tube feeding and seeing if there are any other ways of meeting nutritional requirements rather than requiring use of a tube. Um, additionally, I can provide advice on other types of um, specific micronutrient deficiencies like iron deficiency anemia, um, calcium deficiency. And the other aspect of the work that I'm involved in is providing advice for fussy eating and feeding aversions um, and behavioural issues around feeding. Uh, my specific advice to the new regs would be, if in doubt, refer. 
Um, I'd rather reject referrals than not have patients being referred. And the other thing would be to refer early on in the admission. It's easier to deal with um, prevention of weight loss during an admission rather than actually dealing with the consequences of a um, nutritionally compromised infant when they're going home. Um, the other advice I'd give would be to communicate, discuss it with your MDT. We are here to work as a team together and we work really, really well at Mitacri as a team case management approach. Um, and the next bit of advice I'd give would be check weights and heights and make sure you write them in the discharge summaries when people are going home. We've got lots of issues with frequent readmissions for different things and if we've got um, a kind of history of weights it's really really good for tracking and summarising and monitoring um, those frequent readmissions. Um, and my last bit of information would be if you're doing some referrals to um, you can fax them through to the dietetic department so it's to food nutrition services and just use a normal yellow form and I'll see you around. Hi, I'm Emma Nikas. I'm one of the speech and language therapists here. Um, I work as part of a team providing an inpatient service to Rangatira and Skaboo with my colleague Shannon Doherty. Um, we also provide community services for children with medical-based feeding issues and disability as part of the child development team based here. Um, primarily our role is to assess children's safety in terms of aspiration risks, so food and drink going down the wrong way, and how to manage and reduce any risk as part of a multidisciplinary team which includes all the doctors, the nurses, the dietitians, and anyone else that's involved with the child and their family. Um, so for example a typical referral to us would be a child that's had reoccurring chest infections and pneumonia without any of the obvious cause. Um, our assessment includes discussing and organising further investigations if they're needed for things like video swallows um, with a consultant or the doctor or the paediatrician or discussing it as part of a team. Our interventions tend to focus on working on as part of an MDT team to address the eating and drinking issues with the child and their family. Um, we tend to write specific feeding plans around feeding techniques, positioning utensils, as well as advice on types of meals and textures and frequency of feeding. Um, on Skiboo we also have a role around looking at children, young babies' readiness to feed and um, teaching them pre-feeding skills, again as part of a team. Um, we also support children going from non-oral feeding to oral feeding. And we work as part of a team to kind of develop oral skills and manage aspiration risks. Um, advice to any new registrars would just be to spend time getting to know your team. Um, I think when we work together as a multidisciplinary team for these really tricky kids, we have the best outcomes that we can for their families. Hi, my name is Mira and I'm one of the physiotherapists working in Rangatira Ward. Um, there's currently two physios working part-time with a total of 0.6 FTE Monday to Friday during work hours. And um, our main service at this point is respiratory therapy, so we prioritise which kids we see um, with the amount of time that we have in the ward, and uh, respiratory are the main kids that would benefit from um, respiratory children with respiratory diseases admitted for chest physio. Um, we come into the ward usually around 10 to 12 o'clock in the mornings um, and we screen the whiteboard and so we really check on the diagnosis on the whiteboard and just to the left of the whiteboard is a timetable of the times that we um, will be in the ward if you want to check. Um, the main children we see is our pneumonias that are productive and our chronic lung diseases like bronchitis as well as seeing all our children with neurological impairment that may have risk of respiratory um, compromise as well. So if you have a child that you would like to um, physio or have a chat with one of the physios whether we could be of help, please come and chat to us. We'd really like to have a discussion whether you think your child would benefit or not. Thanks. Lastly, I just want to make sure you um, pass on some words to make sure you guys think about enjoying your time at White Hickory. It's a lot smaller than the other paediatric units in Auckland. And with that comes some real charms, I think. Anyway, just I wrote a little list of things that uh, I thought might help people. Uh, be nice. Uh, remember to check your emails. Um, write clearly. It's a struggle for some of us. Um, remember to date, time, medical council number, all that stuff. And um, more importantly, don't make the children cry. And remember to wash your hands. And then if you're still in doubt, just keep washing your hands. Okay, bye. Hi, my name is Yasha. I'm one of the current registrars and I was lucky enough to be here for a full year. And um, Manish might have mentioned earlier that 
Whitehack is a much smaller pediatric unit than the other places in Auckland, but um, it has a lot of benefits as well. It's got a great team, um, team of or medical team, nursing team, um, midwifery team. So um, it's quite interactive with the different employees and a uh, great opportunity to learn the, the basics of pediatrics, a um, really wide field of what we can learn and, and um, things to improve in, in our career. And um, try to enjoy it as much as you can, have a great time, remember to wash your hands, remember to be nice and friendly and uh, open-minded and I'm sure you'll have a great time.